What if you could run your small boat all day without using any fuel, just doing whatever you wanted to, going wherever you wanted to? People say that you can do that with solar. There's probably some day where we're gonna have to just not be using these gas motors anymore, especially a little two-stroke one like this one. And maybe that day will never come, but there are some areas already where you can't run a gas motor and you have to run electric. And if you have to run electric, Solar is something that you're probably considering to be able to extend the range. Wouldn't it be really cool in a little boat like this if you could just add a little solar panel, keep that battery charged up so you could run your trolling motor all day long? Problem is the technology isn't there yet. A little tiny solar panel is not enough to charge up that battery if you're running and drawn off of that battery it takes too many panels to be able to generate enough electricity to keep your batteries charged to keep your trolling motor going. Let me say right now as a disclaimer, I'm not trying to pick on any of these people who do solar boat projects. I respect the heck out of that. I think it's neat that they do those things. I love the fact that they make videos about that and they share them with us on YouTube. But I think many of those videos fall short when you really look at the numbers and what it costs for those kinds of things. So with some of those videos where people are building a solar powered boat, usually they're using something very small like this trolling motor. So they're going at a very slow speed. They're operating on a smaller boat, but they're showing how they're doing it all completely with solar or using solar to keep their batteries 100% charged. And it just doesn't make any sense with a small boat like this. I'm running a little 12 volt, 55 pound thrust trolling motor. Yes, it's a 12 volt, 55 pound thrust. It's like the most thrust you can get for 12 volts. If I hook that motor up to this really heavy, that thing weighs about 60 pounds. This is a lead acid deep cycle, 100 amp hour battery. This thing will actually run for a few hours powering this motor right here. I just hook it straight up to the battery and that'll run me for a few hours in any conditions. However, it will run out of juice after a few hours. So it's only good for so long. So what some people suggest is they suggest this idea of using solar to supplement and recharge the batteries for something like this. The idea is that with adding a solar panel, you can just keep this battery charged up and keep running that motor. In theory, that totally makes a lot of sense, right? But when you actually do the math and run the numbers, it doesn't add up. Before you get all negative on me and think, oh no, he's going all electric, all solar. No, I still got my little gas motor right here. I love my little gas motor. And as many people have pointed out in some of my other videos, the advantage of a little gas motor like this is that I can strap this little gas motor on the back here and I can bring this spare fuel tank and between the fuel that's in here and this fuel tank, I can run all day long. With a little boat like mine, and this is a 12 foot, 3.6 meter boat, this is the size of a 100 watt solar panel. So if I was to buy a 100 watt solar panel, it's this big. In addition to this solar panel, I would need a charge controller. And a charge controller manages the electricity from the panel to the battery so that it doesn't overcharge the battery. So in a simple setup like this, you have a panel, going to a charge controller, going to your battery, going to your trolling motor. So here's the problem. The draw, even on low speeds with this trolling motor, is more than this panel can generate. Under ideal conditions, a 100 watt panel like this does not generate enough electricity to keep this battery fully charged. The way to solve that problem is with more panels. It seems like what I would probably need would be about six of these panels to generate enough electricity to keep this battery maintained to be able to keep power going to this motor. And that's under ideal conditions. As you can see today, it's completely overcast and cloudy today. So on a day like today, I'm not gonna be generating anywhere near enough electricity, even with six panels to keep this battery fully charged. On a small 12 foot, 3.6 meter boat like this one, if I were to mount four 100 watt panels on this boat, 
that would cover most of the boat. So really what I'd have to do is make a roof for this boat to be able to mount all these panels. It would be bad enough just relying on the speed of a trolling motor whenever I'm out there in the water. Compound that with now adding a big flat roof on top of the boat. When you add a big flat roof to the top of the boat, that can act as a bit of a sail sometimes and impede your ability to move around the boat and do things like fishing. But let's say I just wanted to make it better. I'd be running a system with 200 watt panels. So that's two of these panels going to a charge controller, going to my battery. One of those systems costs over $300. So for over $300, I could potentially extend the range of this battery by maybe 40%. Let's just say this battery lasts me four hours when I'm out there on the water. Adding 40% to that doesn't even add me two more hours. So really it makes it like five and a half hours for over $300. And quite honestly, this really isn't the way to go with a small boat. The real way to do this would be just to add a second battery to mount these two batteries together. I believe that's in parallel. So that way what I'm doing is connecting the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative. And what I'm doing is making one great big battery. So instead of having sort of a 100 amp hours, I might have 200 amp hours. If I had two batteries connected together, I'm doubling my range. This battery cost me $90. So for another $90, I could double my range. Doubling my range for $90 versus adding 40% range for $300. That to me seems like a no brainer. Sure, these lead acid batteries are heavy. If I went with lithium batteries, they're a lot lighter, but they're also a lot more money. Now, some of these people have made these solar electric boat videos because of the fact that they just want to try to see if it works. And it does work. Now, if you're planning a whole day of going out fishing, a solar panel can work for you because if you're going to be out there fishing all day long and it's a sunny day and you're using your motor to get you out to your fishing spot, you're staying there, you're not really using a lot of electricity while you're in your fishing spot, the solar panel can do its job then and recharge your battery. And as with any of the other equations, the bigger the solar panel, the better and faster it can charge up your battery. The problem lies is if you're constantly using that motor or you're using that motor for a long period of time because the draw from the battery exceeds the amount of electricity generated under optimal conditions by the solar panel. And optimal conditions is really one of the key words there because a lot of these solar panels that might say that they're a 100 watt solar panel are only delivering 100 watts under optimal conditions. And that means the maximum direct correct angle to the sun. So if the sun is right there, that your panel is exactly at 90 degrees to the sun and the sun is shining directly on that panel, then it might be generating 100 watts. And if you really want to go farther with your electric trolling motor, the cheapest option right now is just to drop in another battery. How would you go about something like this? Do you think it's worth it to spend maybe $300 to have solar to potentially keep your batteries charged on your boat? Tell me in the comments below. I don't think solar is a terrible idea. I just think the panels do not perform well enough yet to be able to deliver us the results that we need. The people who are making a solar boat that works, where it's regenerating enough electricity, are using multiple panels that cover a lot of space, and they're also using multiple batteries as well. So if you were thinking about that sort of thing with a small boat, if part of that process includes buying multiple batteries, once again, you add one more battery, you've now doubled your range. You add two more batteries, you've tripled your range. One of my other videos I made is about how I like my electric trolling motor better than my small gas motor. Yes, there are some advantages to a gas motor, but I do love the silence of an electric motor. That video is right here if you'd like to check that out.